right so someone has rightly said that the change is the only constant and it is applicable for our own life the systems we follow and the testing procedure that we use so once you conduct the method validation and you are using the same procedure in the analytical lab or quality control lab there could be possibility of the change into analytical test procedure maybe the product composition or there may be change into the regulatory requirements so how one is going to manage this uh, changes going to take place during the life cycle of an analytical procedure and that is the exact point of today's discussion we'll try to understand what parameters needs to be considered in case if a uh, specific change is brought in and we will try to explain with the help of exact examples so let us begin with the presentation part but before i move further let me also introduce myself hi my name is bhaskar napte i am the founder of pharma growth hub and i am on the mission to provide absolute clarity on such a very important technical topics the pharma growth hub has the ever growing community in case if you are interested to join this platform please check the description in the uh, please check the details in the description below thank you so much so let us understand the requirement for validation during the life cycle of an analytical procedure according to the ics guideline q2r2 that is related to the uh, analytical procedure validation so changes may be required during the life cycle of a validated analytical procedure one cannot deny that okay once i have the validation method in the place i am not going to make any change into the testing procedure right there is going to be always the possibility of the change and that's exact point the q2r2 has mentioned in such cases partial or full revalidation may be required partial means what you may not you you need not to conduct the complete validation but maybe the few performance characteristics needs to be evaluated maybe the specificities should be evaluated or accuracy should be evaluated or sometimes the full revalidation may be required if the change is so significant and according to your risk assessment that change can brought the significant impact on to the end result probably the full revalidation may be required science and risk based principles can be used to justify whether or not a given performance characteristic needs revalidation so how one can confirm whether the specificity needs to be revalidated or not means what is the risk that the specificity may get compromised if your end outcome is yes because of this particular change my specificity of the testing procedure may get compromised in that case i need to run the specificity and confirm that yes look at now this is a result that specificity is not getting compromised still my method stands specific and this specificity may get compromised because of maybe the change in the products composition you have added maybe another excipient into the formulation and that excipient may interfere with your analyte of interest and you are going to perform the specificity based on to the risk assessment outcome the extent of revalidation depends on the performance characteristics impacted by the change so you may not perform all the performance characteristics but what is the impact of the change on the performance characteristics those parameter needs to be evaluated need not to evaluate all the performance characteristics which were already been evaluated and here is the exact uh, very important uh, point of the discussion today and we'll take some examples the practical case studies uh, practical examples and try to understand what is the change and how the change can be mitigated what performance characteristics needs to be performed as a part of your revalidation so which performance characteristics should be considered for the below changes in the manufacturing processes so we'll try to understand that if you are making some changes into the manufacturing and how the changes are going to impact on your analytical procedure and then how you are going to define the number of performance characteristic so change in drug product composition so if you change the drug product composition for example you are going to add a new excipient maybe magnesium stated as a lubricant because of certain manufacturing issues you have to have the lubrication step and the lubrication is done by using the magnesium stearate 
So what is the impact of magnesium stearate now inside the formulation? Isn't it? So because magnesium stearate can make your granules of the tablet hard. And if the granules of the tablets becomes hard, it can impact on the recovery or extraction of your analyte. Magnesium stearate can also bring some different kinds of degradation because of the magnesium metal ion. So is there any chance that this particular drug substance can undergo metal oxidation because of the magnesium stearate? So these are the risk assessment points we need to consider. And if you think that, okay, because of the magnesium stearate now, my granules are going to become little hard. What parameters can get impacted then? So which performance characteristics can get impacted because of the addition of just a magnesium stearate? Maybe your specificity also may get impacted because you never know whether magnesium stearate is also interfering with analyte. So specificity needs to be performed. What about the precision? What about accuracy? Probably your precision and accuracy also may get impacted because of the magnesium stearate as the recovery extraction can become quite challenging. So precision and maybe accuracy. Now the third, the fourth parameter could be in terms of understanding the solution stability. Will there be an impact onto the stability of analyte in the analytical solution? You may be using your same old diluent system and you found to be solution much stable. But if there is a presence of magnesium stearate, will there be any impact onto the solution stability? I says that probably not. Will there be any chance on having the impact onto the filter validation or filter saturation study? Probably not. So maybe solution stability can be waved up or solution stability can be performed if you think, oh, magnesium stearate is something that can bring the possible, that can bring the oxidation degradation. So perform the solution stability, understand, you know, how much solution is remaining stable in the presence of magnesium stearate. The next important point and this, so I considered solution stability in, in the revalidation plan. Filter validation can be waved off. The robustness parameter can be waved off because there is no, go, no, no going to be impact onto the, the another parameters like resolution. Maybe you are pigtailing because of your addition of magnesium stearate. What about detector linearity? See, detector linearity also need not to be performed because uh, magnesium stearate can only impact your extraction, not the detection technique. Provided you are using maybe HPLC or some another detector. But in case if the magnesium stearate is also influencing the detection technique, then, then probably yes. Probably you are, suppose you are conducting the assay by atomic absorption spectroscopy. Isn't it? And you are conducting the content for maybe sodium content in your drug product. So is there a chance that the magnesium ion can also influence, get interfered with the sodium uh, sodium uh, content uh, evaluation? Maybe yes. So in that case, maybe the, the detector influence needs to be understood. And that can be evaluated by the specificity itself, by the way. But you can also think of conducting the detector parameters like detector linearity. So the change in the drug product composition must be evaluated in a very specific given situations. It cannot be considered one fit for all. One solution cannot be fit for all the situations. So conduct the risk assessment and based on to the risk assessment outcome, you will understand, oh, these are the performance characteristics I need to perform. Or there may be any new additional performance characteristics needs to be performed because of the change now. You earlier only performed maybe three performance characteristics as a part of your original validation. But because of this drug product composition change, you may need to perform the fourth performance characteristic. So those change, I mean those details must be part of your risk assessment. And based on that, you can raise the change control. You can create the valid validation protocol or you can revise the same validation protocol and conduct the revalidation or the partial validation. So we talked about the first important change in the drug product manufacturing, that is the drug product composition. So please let me know what is your thought process on this particular point. You can put your comment in the below. Thank you so much.